Good morning. This is uh, January 23rd, 2021. My children, well, my first daughter, who was in the um, writer, uh, media, cinema, film industry, uh, got me this. This is so cute. You like that? Bob talk on air. So, <laughs> so I'm going to put it up here as we begin. Um, let's pray. Father God, thank you for uh, your goodness. Holy Spirit, come and touch us that we may experience you, Lord, in a profound way today. Give you glory and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to try to uh, do a few more options of uh, my little room studio, a different angle. Uh, so bear with me. Well, uh, this is our 126th day of daily revival. Wow. Um, and we're covering of uh, Apostle Peter's second message, a six-point message. Uh, we cover first and second. And then third point uh, that I read from verse 16. And his name, now this is Peter speaking, through faith in his name has made his men strong. Whom you see and know, yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Talking about lame who start walking and jumping and leaping and glorifying God's name and joining him into the worship, into the temple through the gate called beautiful. How can you uh, undo something that was done in their plain sight? So all the Jews who witnessed this, and all the Jews who know him, they passed through that gate on the east side of the temple. Said, well, that's undeniable. Testimony cannot be argued theologically, just like this is what it is. Uh, the one that you were debating over, was his sin that he's born lame, or is it parents' sin? And the object of their theological argument now has become a testimony, a reality, existential reality of their conceptual theories and argument. And he says, I heal them in Jesus' name. There's a power in his name, Jesus Christ, right? And, and so, wow. Wow. <laughs> you have so much power, folks. Brothers and sisters, today, I want you to bless somebody in Jesus' name. Yeah, okay. And you don't have to be an evangelist or revivalist or missionaries or pastors or... No, just simply. Uh, when you're sitting down with good social distancing and if you see someone apparently sick, you know, I mean, you know, it doesn't take spiritual discernment to know, for example, a crippled person or people with Down syndrome or even mental illness, you know, you, you know, they're, uh, they stand out. What you do is then stretch your arm and you don't have to be public or announce yourself, just, you know, lift your hand and say in the name of Jesus, I command the sickness to depart from him or her in the name of Jesus. Declare that, pray that constantly. You know, it has become a kind of a good uh, spiritual practice for me as I uh, witness, you know, and, and even like when you see a rack in the freeway as you drive, there are some got into beep, the, you know, got into accident, then you kind of drive and say, Lord, I'll be with them. You know, there, there'll be no uh, injuries. And if they are injured, Lord God, uh, speedy healing will come in Jesus' name. Bless them in Jesus' name. So that's what he's doing. Peter's blessing them in Jesus' name. Um, and finally he says, and be saved. That's the whole thing is about repent, therefore be converted. Verse 19. He says, repent and be converted. I'm like, wow. It is like right on, right? Where did he get that? The word be converted, you think? He invented it, just came up with it. It seems like a 
great word to use. The word to use is epistereopo. Yep, epistrepo. 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 Where did you get that? That's the same word our Lord Jesus used in Matthew 18:3 and said, Assuredly I say to you, unless you are converted and become a little children, you by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. This is Jesus saying. You know, he said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. What does born again mean, Lord? Converted. Right? The whole conversion, like I'm converted. Uh, it's 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 in. And so the whole epistereopo means to cause to return. Going back to God. As uh, we were born and all we spent all our life trying to get away from God, away from God, taking the trip. Uh, repent, conversion means taking that 180 degrees. So you're going this way, 180 degrees, and return. Do you know the in and out uh, hamburger sign? Uh, some of you, uh, not in America, uh, not in West Coast. In and out uh, hamburger sign is go, go this way and then coming back. And so I was listening to Chuck Smith many decades ago, maybe 30 years ago, 35 years ago. 30 years ago, Chuck Smith was saying that the CEO uh, of uh, In-N-Out Burger um, was killed in an airplane accident. So what happens is that when you, you know, in Los Angeles air airport, a lot of big jet land. It's almost every 30 second big jet lands. Not any, you know, COVID-19, I think every maybe 15 minutes airplane lands. But every 30 second or so, jet was landing and in and out burger had a private jet i mean all these ceo guys have like you know gulfstream 60 which is worth about 60 million um and they will he the pilot was inexperienced the private jet pilot and the in and out ceo cfo ceo they were all in there traveling and they follow the jet stream too closely and the vortex of the jet stream hit and then they nose dive and they all died. It's tragic. So Chuck Smith was doing a funeral and then he made an announcement while he was alive, CEO of in and out Burger would not let me publicly say this, but now I could say it, that CEO of in and out was a wonderful Christian and helped the Calvary movement, Maranatha music, Calvary movement uh, with millions and millions of dollars. I'm so thankful that uh, I was able to run with brother like that. And he said that the symbol of in and out Burger is actually represent repentance. Going this way, come back. That's what epistereopo means. Going, come back. Right? Come back. And so when you individually, not corporate, individually repent and convert it, then your sins may be blotted out because you repent. Condition is repent, not like, yeah, okay, come on, Jesus, save me. No, 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 no. Repent, 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 right? You need to repent. It's not just conditional. Uh, it's not magical one. Okay, come into my life. Save me. No. Repent. Only when you're converted, repent and converted, your sins may be blotted out. It will be completely gone. It's not just uh, not remembering. It's erasing, you know, completely. Right? It will be blotted out. Wow. That's a powerful word. Right? That is a good news. Your sins will be blotted out. Blotted out means to be anoint or wash in every part to wipe up wipe away erase blot out not just okay it's there somewhere no it's completely gone clean slate brand new hallelujah we say amen to that that's what's gonna happen that's the good news amen is there any among you who didn't encounter jesus and, and think like oh yeah you know i said those prayers seventh grade but you really haven't repented of the sin that you're committing I mean, it's almost daily basis, isn't it? You know, I mean, 
concerned with our mind, our intention, our action, and repent, repent, yeah, and make effort to turn around, go back to God, come closer to Him, and He'll come closer to you, amen, and then you'll be blotted out, only then you'll be blotted out, and then five po fifth point of uh, Peter is, wow, that this salvation thing that I'm talking about, Peter saying, he's using the Old Testament uh, scripture. He says, So that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, verse 20, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Which holy prophet is he talking about? He's talking about Moses uh, utilizing the De Deuteronomy 18, 15, verses 18 through 20. So chapter 18, verse 15, and verse 18 through 20. For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear all things, whatever he says to you, and it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Moses is their national hero. So he's approaching um, the whole word of God that he's proclaiming from, hey, our national hero, Moses, already said this in the Old Testament. You memorized it. Now it's being reality. That's what salvation is, not keeping... You cannot be saved by keeping the Moses law. No, Moses in the law prophesies that this Savior would come. Wow. And, and, and it's really like, ooh, that hurts, you know. And then they're trying to argue theologically or conceptually. Or nah, nah, nah. And this, listen, you see this miracle? It is undeniable proof. Because I healed him in the name of Jesus. And that person's healed. What say you? What say you? Right? And then he brings out another, their national hero. I mean, is their father, you know, Abraham. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who follow, as many as they spoken, have also foretold these things these days. You are sons of prophets and of the covenant which God made him our father, saying to who? Abraham. And your seed, all the families of earth shall be blessed. Remember Genesis 12? You shall be a great nation, great name, and a source of blessing. Remember Genesis 12? Come on. You are patria, the family, the lineage, the nation, family of God. Of who? Abraham. And you know, as Abraham is become a source of blessing, blessed, right? Eurolegio, Eurolegio takes on the Eurolegio, the good news. It is a good news, guys. Come on. Come on, somebody say amen. Peter is saying that it is written in the Old Testament. Moses said it. Abraham said it. Jesus Christ will be born out of Abraham in lineage. And through him, we are all saved and favor of God will be upon us. And we could really impart this favor today. Daily revival, daily victory in Jesus' name. Let it happen. Amen. Let it happen. And finally, he says to you first. God, having raised up His servant Jesus, sent Him to bless you in turning away. Once again, repent, repent. Every one of you from your iniquities, repent and be saved. Wow. God's plans for salvation is realized in Jesus Christ. What is your key word? What is your key word? See, first service, message. Second, message by Peter. The key word is salvation, salvation, salvation. That's what evangelical Christian really got it right. You know, the whole evangelicalism started because of the uh, our understanding of salvation. It's like we need to initiate, we need to come in repentance, and just as I am, walk on the aisles. You know, Billy Graham said, "Come down, accept Jesus." There's nothing wrong with that, right? But if you just focus on that, we have a problem. Because when we talk about, you know, I got my doctorate at Oxford Center for Mission Studies, we are believing in that because we 
sent we meaning the western or me we meaning the the, the nations sent missionaries to all over the world uh, initially only focusing on salvation of the souls right so you move into a country that it is just politically corrupt economically and they're enslaving people the slavery is rampant you know the the, the caste system is horrible and and yet the, the missionaries in the, the old went and say, oh, we don't care. You could keep your, you know, your dictatorship. You could keep your, you know, corruption. You could keep your caste system. Yeah, you could enslave people. Slavery is fine. We're just going to save souls. If that was the traditional uh, missional model, the OCMS said, no, it's got to be holistic. Salvation on top of that, social justice issue has to be dealt with. You know, economic issues to be, and the medical, the AIDS issue has to be dealt with, on and on and so. OCMS is really trying to be holistic, and that's good. It's because it's both ends. This is where East West West meets East, and so we're trying to be holistic, and that's what we're, we're about. Now, some people, now it is so much social justice they don't even want to talk about salvation. I don't care if you know they're saved or go to hell. I just want social justice to come. I mean, that's, that is also not right because the key word of from the primary source of the Bible, Peter's message talks about what is the key word? Salvation. 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 We need that. So what happened? When that message, boom, permeate the society, they sold everything, the social justice automatically happened, the political system changed, and that's the kind of dynamic that we want to get back to. Not dichotomize, like, is it this or is it that? No, it's both and it's simultaneous to happen. Because Christianity began in Asia. Wow, that was wonderful. You know, yesterday I was reading a book by our, my mentor. Um, Wan Sok Ma, he writes, The deep, Cognition of spiritual world in Asia has been almost ignored by cerebral Western evangelical Christianity as superstition or simple hedonism. Wow, why is that? Right? Uh, because, and he argues that, well, the Christianity, Christianity, even though Christianity was born in Asia, many part of the region still view as a foreign and Western religion. Her how paradoxical is that, right? I was born in Asia, so it really have to see from the Asian perspective. And yet, we are constantly forced to defend our faith. When we think in Asian, Eastern way, they say, oh, that's your religion, that's your culture, that's whatever. So, no. God's plan for salvation from day one, Peter's sec first and second message, verify that it's about salvation. It's about people going to heaven, not going to hell. Primarily. But that does not negate. It's not, exclu it's not uh, mutually exclusive. Because you believe that the other one, social justice and you know and all that, it's done with. It's negated. No, it's both and. Amen? Yeah, let's, let's bless somebody today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit God. Really, Lord, we want to bless somebody in your name because there's a power. Let them really hear our message. Repent, turn around, and be converted. Be saved today. In Jesus' name, amen. Bob out. <laughs> Lord bless you. See you tomorrow.